Yeah. Good evening. Good Happy, evening. Holidays Happy holidays to everyone here. Uh, this is the. Uh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Am, am I staticky, Vic? You're okay. Okay, thanks. Well, your video's working anyway. <laughs> this is the holiday ish issue of our uh, community issues committee. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you. We'll keep it uh, as as uh, short as reasonably possible. <clears throat> um, just I was just going to say that. Well, I'll say it in the context of tonight's. Uh, actual written agenda to start off we will we can dispense for tonight with item number seven, seven regarding the uh, trees well, along gaffey street that are that are dying well first we need to do roll oh oops Beck, thanks for keeping me on the beam please proceed dan dixon uh, mostly here, here. <laughs> mostly harmless, yeah. Um, John Barbera. Last time I looked, yes. I won't go there. Uh, David Rivera. Yeah, here, present. Uh, Cynthia Gagne is excused. Uh, Chuck Hart, I, I didn't catch whether we whether he's excused or not. No, I, I, I have no point of reference on that. I just. Okay. Did no. he say anything to you, David? Or yeah, he had he had a, he said he had a medical appointment somewhere. That's right. I uh, oh okay. So Mr. Mr. Scribe, I apologize. He told me he had a medical appointment, but he did expect to be here at some point. Okay, so that's right. For for if he doesn't make it, then we mark him excused. Yes. Um, and John Demiglio, anybody hear from him? No. no. Okay, so he would be unexcused if he doesn't show. Victor? So, oh, and um, Vic Christensen here. <laughs> so we have four, four out of seven, so we do have a quorum. Good, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, it's, um, I just want to start by saying that item seven on the agenda which is about communicating with the port regarding the tr trees that are dying along Gaffey Street is being uh, managed, now, or being taken care of by planning and land use. And at their meeting tomorrow night, they're gonna discuss a letter to the port about uh, those trees. I will just say on Chuck's behalf that uh, those trees are dying for sure. He's yeah. concerned that it may be due to leaking uh, fuel products in pipelines underneath the that uh, parkway there. So we'll, we'll learn more tomorrow night, I suspect. <clears throat> so item seven, we can uh, say that we've been there and done that. The re the, what I'd like to do tonight is slightly different than normal meeting. Uh, well, no, it's a normal meeting, sorry. Let's get back on track, Dan. The two items here involve, I think, motions and uh, communication or letters to uh, government bodies. One is item three uh, regarding the discussion we've had about renewing the swimming pool at Peck Park. Yeah. And the other, the other is item four regarding communicating with the Navy over the prospective lease of the defense fuel supply point. Uh, and once again, I've pushed the head of myself. I should have asked first for public comment on non-agenda items. Seeing no hands up, I will say that uh, we can certainly take more public comment at the end if, if, uh, if it is uh, warranted. So back to items three and four, and specifically item three. I would like to ask the committee, and I, I, I do wish everyone was here because of this request, 
we're gonna, I, I want to send a letter to the city, specifically to the mayor's office, the Rec Department of Rec and Parks, and to the new council office, <clears throat> asking that a swimming pool or renewal of a swimming pool at Peck Park be included in this year's upcoming agenda, <clears throat> and that our neighborhood council turn it into an annual request uh, for a budget item. I know it will take years to get it done, but uh, I really, based on discussions we've had in this committee and things we've heard out in the neighborhood, uh, it is considered a worthy goal to attempt to replace the swimming pool at Peck Park. So I'd like to ask the members of the committee to help me out here. Uh, with your specific thoughts about the necessity of and the validity of spending money on that pool uh, as we move forward in the city. I don't want to leave out uh, any, any particular opinion, so I will mention that one of our committee members actually asked a good question. Her question, well, it was Cynthia. Her question was, uh, how does the community feel about it? Do the, do the neighbors uh, feel that it's important? And that's a good question. And I think it bears discussion here. But I want to create a letter to send to Rec and Parks asking that the rebuilding of Peck Park Pool be prioritized in their budget and within the city budget starting this year. And I, at this point, I'm not asking for that we request a specific amount of money because as we know with these capital projects, when they do happen, they come frequently as a result of, of grants from outside bodies or other departments or uh, the federal government or, or uh, foundations. <clears throat> it's been pointed out to us that the Hay Rookie Pool had a big infusion of cash, I believe, from the Annenberg Foundation. I may have that wrong, but it was a big bunch of cash from a private foundation that really uh, put it over the top. So I'd like to ask the members of the committee here to spitball this for a few minutes, see if we can come up with some points that are salient that we can put into a letter, and then I'd also like to ask the committee uh, if once we have established some of these points, both for this item and the next agenda item, if we can meet again on an emergency basis <clears throat> right after the new year, uh, at which point I will have taken the points we talk about tonight and uh, tried to come up with a framework letter that we can send out and uh, meet briefly on, uh, John and I have been talking about a possible date, meet briefly to uh, approve said letter. But I didn't wanna just write another letter. I, as you know, often uh, these letters that come out of committee are kinda written by one person more or less or two people. And I really wanna have the committee's input on this. Uh, so that I don't miss anything, John doesn't miss anything, so that we uh, hit the right note that we want to express regarding spending this money. So I'll be asking the same question on agenda item four, but does anyone have any thoughts about how to present this to the city? Dan? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, since we got a new councilman, uh, have they, has he appointed any new deputies? I think we could contact <laughs> concerning. Actually, I think John, uh, John uh, Barbera can respond to that since he 
talked to somebody in the council office today. Uh, do you guys remember Sergio? I forgot Sergio's oh, yeah. last name. Yeah, yeah he's Serge. been. Yeah. So he's now. Uh, I'm not sure if he took Ryan's position. Uh, you know, Ferguson. I don't. I'm. Not, but he was answering the phone today, and uh, um, I come to find out that Ryan Ferguson um, actually got a job with Kaiser uh, in the governmental issues department over there at Kaiser. And he starts the end of January. So oh, good. He's, he's taken a month off. So um, so he's gone through the process and everything. So it looks like they, they hired him. And so he'll start and he'll be in the government department of Kaiser working with them. Um, Sergio is talking to they're right now the Kim McCosker's, I guess, advisor. Uh, or the the guy, you know, the, the person who works close to him is hiring everybody right now. Uh, His chief of staff. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, chief of staff, thank you. So they're in the process of hiring people, they're getting people in. Uh, Sergio is there, you know, doing his thing with him and uh, uh, they got for, they got to hire, there's 25 people they're gonna hire and he, he said they got about eight or nine right now. So they're still in the process. So, yeah, the reason I ask is because if he could, if he selects somebody that, that's familiar with our area in that situation, you know, but uh, Sergio, it was, wasn't he the, uh, uh, the chairman or, or, or president of the Chamber of Commerce in Wilmington? I, I, oh. I believe so. He said he was on, um, he was on the council before working with, you know. Oh yeah, I, I've known him since way back. You know, Janice. Sorry, Hire. guys. <laughs> I got a mute. Hang on. Well, David, that's that's good, very good point. And we do yeah, need a we need a point person in the council office. Yeah, to that's work right. With us and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, if, if we, we don't get anybody that's not familiar, then it's, it's going to be a little harder for us to try to get this over, you know? Yeah, and, right. and you know what? I think I can talk to Sergio. Maybe I'll give him a call tomorrow and find out, you know? Okay. Because uh, Sergio yeah. remembered who I was. I had talked to him before. And he's been on, he's come on the council meetings before on the Northwest. He's He's been over there on, you know, as attendee. Yeah. Oh. So, um, I, you know. I, I, I can't pick them out of my brain for some reason, but um, I'm, I'm glad you have talked to him and that's a, you, you've got a foot in the door with the new council office. I think that's great. Yeah. Good, good, good. I'll um, even stop by and see him, I told him. I've got to go to the office and look at a couple of things over there, you know. Good. For the next setups and stuff we do, so. Good. Uh -huh. John, very good, very good, John. Good, good, David. Um, so, what when we do communicate with these uh, government representatives, uh, I I just feel that uh, Northwest kind of got the short end of the stick here. I realize that they spent a lot of money to build the so-called hay rookie pool at the other end of town. Yeah. And that's appropriate. It, it was long overdue. But here we have a, an existing facility, which is simply, as far as I know, has simply gone to seed. And, but, but it hasn't been removed or destroyed. The, the, the hole in the ground is there. The, uh, the building for equipment is there, even at least the foundation for it. If, even if they tear it down, they can, they've got a, a starting point. Uh, yeah. Can it, I ask? Can please. I ask an ignorant question? Please. My <laughs> ignorance. Okay. Where the hell is this pool at? How come I don't see it? If you <laughs> drive into Peck Park and go down the down to your left, yeah, uh, below there's a building that is the uh, it's the gymnasium, basketball gymnasium. Okay. Beyond so that. Is it yeah, where we is, the, is it where we used to hold our meetings? No, no, no. As you as you come down, the big building where we meet when we're live is on the right. Yeah. 
and okay. you go and you go down uh, and help me here if I get this messed up. But on the left is a rather modern building that is the gymnasium. Yeah. Below, okay, way so below the, way below that are the baseball diamonds. Okay, so but back up, back up by this gymnasium. Behind that is the yeah. swimming pool and the tennis courts. Right. Okay, so it's the backside basically. It's of, it's uh, it. So it's the closest to uh, to to Park Western. Okay. Okay, it's gotcha. A, I know that what, end yeah. of the park. Yeah. Matter of fact, I seen that when I was there one day, uh, it's usually where they park a big, usually a, the big buses that pick people up to take them here and there, that yeah. section of the parking lot, they park it yeah. at that end. Yeah. 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 If you're walking up to the building, it'd be on the far left side. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, gotcha. um, okay. Sorry. I didn't, like I said, I no. Uh, I know. Well, it's been it's here not... all these years, eight years. And I still <laughs> listen, I'm finding more potholes in places I haven't seen yet, you know, it's amazing. Well, that's that swimming pool is the biggest pothole in town, and it yeah. needs to be filled with water. Yeah, uh, <laughs> David, I, I I think, and maybe Chris, uh, uh, Vic, maybe you're aware that pool's been down for eight years, hasn't it? Is it even existed in the last? Certainly, the last half dozen years, it's been closed. It, yeah, it has. So it's it's long overdue. And Matt, our our former member Matt DeMeglio, who worked for Rec and Parks over at the Hay Rookie Pool, he's been in the equipment room at Peck Park, and he indicates it's a mess, but it still exists. Yeah. So th there's infrastructure there, and certainly it's basically a start over. But in my it's opinion, building a swimming part of a big part of a swimming pool is digging the hole and we already have that okay yeah. so is there i mean is there is there a pool already in there and everything yes that's... it was a facility for 30 yeah. plus years okay so uh, maybe maybe 40 or 50 actually is it something that they got to redo the pool or run you know i i imagine it's a, a kind of a tear down and build it up again yeah i, I can't say for sure but it definitely it needs a full rehab complete okay. rehab but, so what but, are we the, but the whole 50, 50 hundred thousand dollars to redo it or well i understand the hay rookie pool what fifty hundred thousand boy that's when i went to high school um the hay rookie pool i believe matt said came in at about 12 million but that Sorry, included 12 million of, to do the pool the whole facility and oh uh, but but that again there was an existing pool they started with the hole in the ground it had been abandoned for a long time so they picked that as their project and it was rebuilt at great expense now there were a lot there was frankly some geological and engineering issues there because it's kind of cantilevered out over the over gaffey street if you go by there uh there's it was a lot of work i would think uh gaffey the, that our peck park pool would not be quite as much, but you're, it's the city after all. So we're talking millions. There's no question. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we've said all along, it's kind of a multi-year process as far as the budget goes. And, but if it's a priority for rec and parks, then they, we can work with them to kind of, I try to identify finance sources, sources of money. And I know we have people on our, on our uh, council who know how to write uh, grants and that sort of thing oh and yeah if, if that's helpful uh yeah. we can we can probably get some of our people to participate so it's just i understand the city has many many different priorities the question is for me will this new council office uh and the new mayor maybe take a slightly different way of looking at things and not yeah. just settle for, well, leave it to Rec and Parks the way they've always done it. You know, maybe that isn't the best way. Maybe, maybe there are other ways to do things. And I'd love to be able to explore that with the council office and the mayor's office for that. Maybe, for maybe that we matter. can, maybe we can get Tim to next month to come in to the uh, issues committee and. Well, 
Yeah, yeah, I'd sure love to have him as a guest uh, if, he, and, if he has the time. He's, yeah, he's been very can... good about visiting our meetings uh, while he was on the campaign trail and, and just as a, a, you know, as a stakeholder. He is a stakeholder. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that that can be arranged at some point. But yeah. I, I think we need to draft a, a letter that indicates our ongoing interest in having this happen for our part of town, but to the benefit of the whole city, not just Northwest San Pedro. So is there anything that we, I, I would stress in the letter that it's an existing facility uh, yeah. and that is helpful, um, that it has been used for summer programs uh, by Rec and Parks for kids for, it was used for decades for swim lessons, free swimming, and uh, team, uh, you know, all sorts of community club, water, water sport things. I, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm not that sure of that. But it was used for a lot of different activities in its heyday. And I think it needs to be brought back. Yep. Well, can we start off, uh, well, can we add into this letter that we say, you know, um, what would it take, you know, first of all, is to ask Beck and Rox, you know, what would it take to bring this pool back? You know, uh, I think that's that, a good would be, that's, that would be one of the first things and the main things I think what we ought to do is, you know, number one, why is it shut down? Number two, what would it take to bring this pool back to shape yeah. or open it up again, bring it back to the, uh, you know, to the, com you know, to the yeah. community, you know. I'm writing this, I'm writing this down. And how can we help? Yeah. Yeah. Angus is hearing my two dogs. <laughs> oh, think... sorry about that. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> 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 Um, Victor's got good. his hand up. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that the, the key uh, player is going to be the councilman's office, Tim's office, if we can get him to, to, to back it up and, uh, you know, yeah, because it's going to take somebody like him to, you know, say, well, I'm on your guy's side and we're going to do whatever we can to, you know, get that back pool, pool open because I'm, I'm looking for some hot summers coming, you know, with the drought and all that stuff. And, right. Uh, Having a pool right. will be it will will really be good right. for, yeah. for the younger kids. Yeah, really. <clears throat> exactly right. Exactly. By the way, I I read some time ago, not too long ago, that community pools like this one are actually not terribly detrimental, uh, given the, the drought conditions, because it's uh, water that's re it's you know, it's used over and over and used by a number of people. And it's not like certain other landscaping. It's not, um, or, or recreational uses, it's not not wasted. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So this, these are good points. So let's frame, frame, it, frame, it, frame, it, frame it as a question to the council. Yeah, Victor, has got his hand up. Go, Victor. Yes, Victor, please. Um, well, going back to Cynthia's question, something we can put in the letter is what the community does want to see from that, but we have to ask them first. And then, you know, what, what would the community like to see done at that pool? Would they want swim lessons? Would they want uh, even scuba diving training? Would they oh, want... That's good, you know, yeah. Because, that, in fact, that's when, when I was in the Air Force, uh, that's why I have that idea. We did that at the Fort MacArthur pool. The, the, that's right. The, the, training comp the, the training guy group came in, and we held the pool sessions at the Fort MacArthur pool. So that could something like that could be offered at this pool, too. Um, mm -hmm. would obviously be a cost for um, 
Yeah, I can't mute the ringer. <laughs> Hang on, one, one more ring and it'll stop. Um, uh, but, but they can <laughs> offer, you know, lifeguard training or scuba training or something like that. But we would, it would be good to get that information from the community of what they want to see happen there. Uh, any, any free and swimming, can... train, uh, you know, lessons, whatever it is. But before we put it in the letter, we should find out, as Cynthia mentioned, um, that it needs to be, we, we need to figure out what the community does want. So we have to get some feedback from them before we put it in the letter. And those good, are, you know, that is a good, you know, between scuba, swimming lessons. I know when I lived in Torrance, uh, I was not just down the street from a Kai swimming pool on Hawthorne and two, you know, and in 255th Street, 35th Street. And they would also teach kids to play uh, water polo. Yeah, there you yeah, go. You know? yeah. And the kids loved it. They would get, they would have their teams and, and, and they did it from like the ages of, you know, four to six, they had their little class and then seven to nine or 10 years old, they had, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot to bring. I, I mean, look at the way I look at it and, and you guys tell me if it's BS, but how many kids do you see outside playing? How many kids do you see ride their bikes out in the street or, or they're riding up and down? How many kids do you see with basketball courts in the driveway and they're out there, there's four or five kids that during the day or even at night, like we used to play, be playing basketball and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, everybody, this thing right here where we're on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this thing right here <laughs> is the ruin of a lot of kids. Yeah. They stay home. They've got their, um, you know, what used to be Atari and Nintendo. Now it's, mm -hmm. and Game Boy. Well, now it's that other one, the, you know, the Xbox. And they're playing war games, you know, yeah. Call of Duty and this. And, you know, Runaway Thief car number 27. And it's, you know, everything is F you and this and that. I mean, that's all they do. There's no more... So the kids don't intermingle with each other, but hopefully the pool can bring back, you know, where a parent can take them off or drop them off because they've got supervision there. And of course, that's the other question that they're going, you know, you're going to have to hire one or two lifeguards and somebody to teach these people. See, it's not just the amount of money to build the place and rebuild it, but then what's the expenses of having two, three, four people there Manding the pool and running, you know, that's absolutely, well, and, absolutely and, and correct. Ma and maintaining it, and yeah. maintaining it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the old, the old right. thing. You spend two million dollars on a house, but that's not that's the only cost. It, the the first letter should be of you know, what would it take? You know that this first letter should be about what are we looking at? What would it take? Can the pool come back? Can this be done? Yeah, and well, I think you you you've all given me a. a a wake up call here in a way, I, and I appreciate it. I think the first yeah. step maybe is to talk to Rec and Parks or, and find out what programs they have. And I know the pandemic has screwed things up, but presumably if, when they go back to normal in the summer, if there is a normal, uh, how will Hey Rookie Pool be used? Is it, it, it may do all of the things that we're talking about right now. And it's possible that that's sufficient for yeah. the whole San Pedro that's community. That's what they call it, an, an A rookie pool. Is that what a, it's called? Well, it's the it, it's the Gaffey Street pool at Angels yeah. Gate, but uh, it's because A rookie was had to do with the Navy or the Fire Department. I don't know. I don't remember. David, do you know? No, uh, Dan, that that had to do with the Ford when they had soldiers up there. You know. Yeah. The, okay. So, Okay, so it was yeah. a it was a, a Port MacArthur facility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I interject something else? Uh, Please. Once we get this ball rolling, a method of outreach, I think 
if we could contact like uh, uh, Donna Littlejohn to put in an article that says, uh, that our council is looking to reopen that pool, you know? Yeah. And that we could, uh, you know, because she, she does a lot of side stories like that. And that uh, we could get, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would respond to an article like that, you know? And, and she, she probably would do it too. You're absolutely right. And I, I you've, you've really got me turned around here and thinking we need to find out how the existing facilities in town are used and uh, what uh, what Rec and Parks analysis is. We've been told by someone in Rec and Parks that people in the department think it is a good idea to rehabilitate Peck Park Pool, but it has not been a budget priority for a variety of reasons, including the money put into the uh, Gaffey Street pool. So we need to get more information. And, and you've really uh, opened my eyes to this. Uh, uh, we, got we need to find out, we need to find out uh, what the department's attitude is about it. And as Victor said, and as uh, Cynthia said, what's the community reaction to it? So or the communities stand on it. Maybe it can be an article in our next newsletter. Maybe it can be something that outreach can help us with. Uh, so rather than just pounding out a letter and sending it into the, <laughs> into the ether over at the council office or, or at Rec and Parks, I, I'm hearing, and I believe you're correct, we need to go in armed with some more information, with, with information. Uh, it, um, we're partly asking Rec and Parks the question, which is important, <clears throat> but it is uh, important also to have some sense of where the where, where the San Pedro community uh, stands on this, because it is public money. It's a yeah. pretty big expenditure of public money, and uh, maybe the community has other priorities. Well, because it's, it's it's nice to think of a pool being there, but when you think of it taking money away from other recreation uh, programs or then it's not so appealing. So we got we need a broader base of information and you've really made me aware of that and I appreciate it. Uh, we got Doug, uh, Doug Eberhardt has a question. Hello, Doug. Hey. I, don't, I don't have a question, I have answers. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. So the Hey Rookie Pool was constructed during World War II at Fort Mac using money that was raised by a movie called Hey Rookie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that featured a Thank bunch you. of Hollywood stars doing various, I don't know, entertainment things. But um, that's why it's called the Hey Rookie Pool. Thank you. It was, and it was built with China shipping mitigation money. The rebuild? Yeah, yeah it's almost, I think the port ponied up like $10 million for it. Which was out of the mitigation money. Right, yeah. So it was not a, that's the only reason it was rehabbed was because the port put up the money. Right. Um, however, I can tell you that the, the what you may hear from Rec and Parks is that a big part of the problem is staff. Yeah. That, that they don't have staff for two pools in Pedro. And, yeah. you know, according to our new mayor Bass, she's crazy to fill all these uh, hundreds of vacant positions in the city. So who knows? But I would definitely talk to Deanne and have her get you in touch with Aquatics because they're a separate division. Thank you. We, so, we actually have talked to her and uh, and we'll okay. follow up with that. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't see it being a maybe a priority for this year's budget. But this, I assume, Doug, we're looking at a multi-year process. I have no idea what kind of shape Peck Park Pool is in, so I don't. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, unattended I don't know. and abandoned. Well, yeah, but I mean, if it's physically sound and whatever, it may not require a lot of you know work to do. Okay, so, so action out of this meeting then I would think if no if there's no objection is to uh, talk to Rec and Parks, get the lowdown on what the situation at Peck Park is, uh, talk to them about how the 
Gaffey Street pool is being used. And mm -hmm. I, I'm imagining, Doug, they're going to, that summer programs will come back if they haven't already. I'm, I'm actually so, not sure what's going on there. I believe it's actually open because I mean, I drive up and down Gaffey all the time. And, you know, there's an entrance down on Gaffey. Right. And as far as I've seen when I drive by, the gate is open. Good. So I'm guessing Good. if the gate is open, the pool is probably open. Well, hmm. Doug, your points are well taken, certainly about staffing and the cost yeah. of, of running a facility after it's built. We've seen the. At other facilities, we've seen what happens when they run out of money to either maintain it or keep it staffed. So uh, it's a, it's a kind of an ongoing problem. And th this is really important to uh, get good information before we uh, go Maybe to, we can set up before we really go after this. Yeah, we can set up something for, you know, Deanne to give us, uh, we can give her a yeah. call next week and talk to her yeah. maybe yeah we'll we'll get we'll and get that that information doug which is and the aquatics is the word i hadn't heard before so but that <laughs> makes sense yeah just i mean we found out i mean deanne is the pacific region superintendent but she's not in charge of a lot of stuff that's right we, she we, has as we that. found out with parking at cabrillo beach we found out that's a whole different division yeah. and i know aquatics <laughs> is too so i don't okay. think she has any you know okay yeah we found out there's a lot of different uh, <laughs> you know yeah very good uh, so let's let's say that the action out of this meeting rather than firing off a letter to anybody uh immediately will be to uh get more information as we've spoken about in the last few minutes uh from the department the various departments within the departments and um, put together a, a, a logical approach to how to ask for this kind of investment by the city. Um, yeah. Unless anyone has any other thoughts, I'd like to leave it at that. Well, just a quick comment. Um, yes. As far as whether the one pool, you know, has enough activities to do the job, like you were mentioning before, they're at opposite ends of the city. So yes. even if the Gaffey Street pool does have these various activities, I think it would still be worth, you know, assuming the community is looking for it, um, yeah. having possibly the same activities or other ones and or other ones at Peck Park because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't have to go clear across San Pedro to get to one or the other. Yes. And as people okay. constantly comment, boy, it takes a long time to get across San Pedro these days. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you know with Ponte Vista and things like that causing traffic backups, um, it yeah. can take all that time to get across San Pedro. Listen, that's true. I can tell you for a fact, okay? I go pick up my wife, and, you know, Dan knows it, you know it, Vic. I leave my house at four o'clock. She works at San, you know, at uh, Florence Memorial. She's off of Sky Park. Okay, I go through the back way because she works at the T3 building, right behind the uh, where they do the X-rays and MRIs and all of that building. So I get there about 4:20, 4:15, depending. You know, going is not so bad. She gets out at 4:30. By the time she gets to the car, it's 4:33, 34. Get in. We go. By the time I get back home, I get I get to, um, I'll usually take the route PCH. I'll turn on Eshelman, and then it takes me right to the 252 Street, right? Yeah. I'll get on Western. Well, the minute I get to the light there on PV Drive and Western, it's already seven, wow. eight, nine cars back. Sure. So by the time yeah. I get to Capitol, I, I wait another wow. 15 to 18 minutes just to get to capital from PV Drive. Yeah. It is now, and that is right now at that time of night, at, you know, 450, you know, 445, yeah. 450. The beginning wait, of the- so, Yes, wait till they open up Ponte Vista. 
No, it's, it's happening. <laughs> I haven't seen nothing yet. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah, no, good. But, I mean, that's that's always a, a, a subject of uh, fruitful conversation. What's happening to m mobility in San Pedro? Yeah. Well, another uh, another thing to think about is what kind of what you know where the metro runs as far as getting people to and from the pools. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. True. Good point. I've come up. I come up with a solution. Hey. I think Doug, Doug will agree with me on this. At Averill Park, where the bridge is, right? Because there's that water, and then the bridge is right over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's put a diving board right there. There's <laughs> a nice little pool right. There. Right, right in the right in the I, middle of right in the middle of town. You agree, that's Doug? A, that's a great idea as long as people remember to yell duck. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. And I know yeah. they're not talking about the duck animals. <laughs> well, both, both. Could be very both. Good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, this, uh, uh, oh, we, we have a way to move forward here, and I appreciate everybody's input very, very much. Uh, the next item is a similar question. Now it's Similar, a similar discussion I'd like to have about the DFSP tank farm on Gaffey Street across from Conoco Phillips. And um, in the, it, as everyone knows, it's where the Bobby Sox fields are and the Little League fields, that old uh, underground tank farm, which yeah. the Navy is in the process of this, of finding a less e, less or less e, uh, less e. To, to take control of, of part of that property. It's a complicated property because if you look at the Navy's proposal of what they're what they're uh, leasing, even though it's almost 300 acres, it's uh, it's our understanding, and in fact I know that the palace, the protected area for the Palos Verdes blue butterfly is not part of the lease. And the baseball fields, both the Bobby Sox uh, area and the four, three or four diamonds up towards five points, they're not in the lease area. They will remain. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's a kind of a strange shape piece of property, I suspect. But it was uh, split off from the uh, lease considerations for Terminal Island, where the Navy had their fueling terminal. That's being handled in Long Beach, uh, since it's not in the city of LA. So that leaves us with the property on Gaffey. And the Navy has said, and I believe it continues to be so, that uh, they are still in the process of determining if there needs to be additional environmental uh, remediation or an, an environmental study. Yeah. And th there has not been a decision yet. That should be coming soon. And that will uh, dramatically change the timeline on this project. But it was our understanding that no final lease decision would be taken uh, until well into 2023 and possibly 2024. Uh, however, it's been pointed out that uh, we need to keep their feet to the fire as best we can, given our uh, position as citizens in the community. To, and it was suggested we send a letter to the Navy uh, outlining what we feel would be unacceptable uses for that property. Yeah. And, uh, that's what I'd like to get some help from you tonight on. Uh, Pat, Pat Nave, who you all know, uh, has a long list of things they shouldn't be, that shouldn't be done with that property. Uh, but I want to get your take on it. I think, I think we can agree, maybe, or maybe you don't agree, that uh, we do our share of... Um, sustaining the uh, petrochemical and uh, 
oil and gas economy with uh, everything that is done in San Pedro. And uh, we would hope that the Navy will look to other uses for that property. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, but I think the, to me, one absolutely unacceptable use would be to build new above ground tanks there. Uh, that would not be acceptable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and a, 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 um, a freight yard for, uh, for uh, shipping containers would <laughs> not be acceptable. No. Uh, or any, any uh, industrial use that is loud, involves a lot of lights, or um, is uh, harm, potentially harmful to uh, public health is not acceptable. Or, involve, a, or involves a lot of traffic. Or involves a lot of traffic. We are doing our share of uh, carrying traffic uh, in this part of town. And uh, frankly, Gaffey, if anything, Gaffey should be used as uh, traffic relief for Western. And to bring in a use that uh, would bring in a lot of traffic to, to be in and out of that facility all day, every day, would not be beneficial to the community. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. it, 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 I wonder if the committee is in general agreement that we want to uh, make it clear to the Navy that we think we're doing our part uh, for the uh, industrial economy and for the shipping economy and for the military economy. And that uh, we hope they will negotiate a cleaner, quieter use for that property. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's basically what the point of the letter would be. And this is something I would like to um, get out. I think it's my, my sense of urgency about the swimming pool uh, is allayed. And in fact, uh, this letter to the Navy could, could wait a month. So I think, I think uh, we could forego the emergency meeting and just say that at next month's uh, committee meeting, we will uh, have a letter ready to go to the Navy. And I know our friend Pat Nave will want to participate in that. He may have already written his own letter by now, but uh, <laughs> I, hope that, I hope to talk to him and assure him that we, uh, we want to be on the same page in terms of usage of that property. So any, any comments or thoughts um, of, of pitfalls, of things we should be pointing out or avoiding that uh, well, we haven't mentioned here? Well, not, not that we haven't mentioned it, but just as an example, um, even now, pretty much any time you go down Gaffey to Five Points, the, that line of cars to the, going to the left, it takes a long time to get through. Yes. So that's another incentive not to put something that would cause more traffic to be involved because right. then it's going to just be worse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I've become convinced, Vic, that part of that is that uh, GPS, uh, GPSs in cars often cite that route through five points as a quicker way. Uh, to get over to the South Bay than taking Western to PV Drive or or yeah. that that well, approach. It, I, it, it, it may depend on whether the the user has the app set up to go shorter distance or shorter time. Right, right. Because sometimes you can adjust that and yeah. pick one well, over the other. Mine, do, mine does both of those. <laughs> so you, you pay your money and you take well, your choice. But like anyway, said before, that, that's, that's minor. The, yeah. Certainly, traffic is is an issue throughout our area. But is there anything we're missing in terms of what we do not want this to be? Um, Maybe we should have what's his name, the speaker that came last time, to give us updates on what's going on. And let's find same thing like we're going to do at Peck Park. 
Let's yeah. ask him some of these questions in direct. Oh, if he, do, you some, mean, do you mean the uh, public Greg? information guy from oh, the Navy? Greg or Greg? Uh, Greg, he's, he's a great guy, but he can only tell us what they tell him. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think, let's see, uh, I think, um, Oh, I just found out a relative of mine was not in Buffalo. She's in Atlanta, so she's safe. Thank you. Glad to well, hear that. I Atlanta Sorry. versus Buffalo, that's a relative uh, safety <laughs> thing. Well, I was going to add, I keep waiting for John Barbera to suggest that a, a good use of the Navy site would be the Trump Presidential Library. That's true, too. I mean, it's site's already toxic, right? And I don't know. Oh, boy. You know. All right. There, we can there's do that. A, unfortunately, Just <laughs> unfortunately, there there are plenty of sites like that throughout our area. Toxic, yeah. toxic dumps. So, uh, we, we need to we need to talk to them and find out. Yeah. What's you know? I mean, just to get a more a more understanding. What's because it's been two years since he showed, you know, it's been yeah. actually two and a half years when he came. He yeah. came in, in actually 2019, if you remember. What they will tell us is that he can't comment on, on and the Navy does not comment on ongoing negotiations, lease negotiations. So, and I think that was sort of Pat's point, and I take it as a good one, that uh, they may not be willing to tell us what they're talking about, but we ought to take a stand and tell them what we're expecting not to have happen there. And I think there's some validity to that. So I well, will, um, I will get in touch with uh, the PIO down there uh, tomorrow. And uh, there's a, there's a website that I can't remember off the top of my head that it shows the status of the uh, property and it may not be current, but we can at least, get some idea of what's going on uh, perhaps with the negotiations. So I will do that tomorrow and and come up with some kind of, come up with a uh, framework letter. Again, Pat Nave may well participate in that, which is good. And we'll get it ready for uh, next month's um, next month's meeting. And if another committee on our board uh, takes action on this, that's okay too. Perhaps the more voices, the better. Yeah. Any other comment on that? Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's item four. <sighs> item, item five, uh, as you know, Metro and the DOT dash system have made adjustments to their routes in San Pedro. And uh, we don't often get written complaints from stakeholders, but uh, this, is a, this is a great one. A uh, gentleman wrote a long, long email talking about how it, it, the new routes in the south end of our neighborhood have. Uh, well, actually, it includes coastal too. The new routes have left him high and dry. He has no easy access to the bus route that he has taken for years, which is a regrettable, absolutely regrettable result of, of adjustments of this sort. On the other hand, this afternoon, an email arrived. John, I don't know if you read it. I, yeah, I fellow, did partially. Fellow complaining bitterly, actually, it's a lady, I think, complaining bitterly that. The uh, bus route, uh, the metro bus route has been diverted from either 14th or 19th Street to at least a section of third, of, sorry, 14th Street, which is very narrow. And uh, she complains that two buses can't even pass on that street. So why are they using it as a bus route? It's a great question. Uh, and, and so it depends on whose ox is being gored, but there are, there's human fallout from all of these uh, governmental and uh, authoritative uh, positions. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be talking to, uh, 
John, I'll get together with you and we'll read, read over these. And I don't know that there's anything we can do about it other than empathize with the, with the folks, but right. let's take a look at it um, and at least uh, let them know if we understand it's, a, it's difficult and it's a problem. Well, if you remember when we both, we got the Metro and then the dash line when they spoke to us. Yeah. Um, and how they said they were going to change the one line, the, the one Metro uh, that would go in front of uh, Harbor that would go down and drop off at Marina, you know, where the yes. maritime is. And yes. they were going to uproot it because they weren't getting enough people. Well, you know, let's 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 use some common sense. 2020, 2021. Well, how many people were going anywhere? Yeah. OK, nobody was using buses. I, I, I you know, they even said it that the if they don't get over 100 people on a bus, it just doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, so you're in a pandemic stage. OK, if yeah, no one is using the, their home. How could they be using the bus and how can they be going here and there? A lot of people weren't even going out to the stores. If they did, they go right by their house, pick up a few things and that's it, or had Dash come and deliver. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know. I, I hear you, but I can't imagine that even as weird as these bureaucracies are, that they would uh, take the, that two year snapshot as indicative of how many people are riding the bus over time. Uh, it's something, it's a question yeah. to be asked, when, when did they do these studies? But I suspect they have an answer for it. And I suspect given the cost of labor, the cost of um, all the new uh, electric buses they're gonna have to buy, all everything going on, that yeah. they are, they're struggling mightily, I imagine, I hope to, to assign routes that will be used uh, by the reasonable number of people. And uh, this has got to be, it's got to be hard to do, but it's certainly um, unfortunate that, that uh, citizens feel victimized by this change. And we all feel victimized by change. Whenever something new happens, we go, what was wrong with the old way? And I'm inconvenienced by this. And it's true, it's, it's, not, it's not good. Maybe but I'll give you a I good think, example. I think our I think our ability to influence Metro's uh, route decisions is uh, very limited. If you go, let's give it a good example. We were in the parade this year, right? Yeah. Again. And where were we? Where were we? On Pacific. Yeah where we've always been on 19th street or 18th street, depending where they put us. And then we'd come up from out there. We weren't yeah. on Pacific, but this time, because they got a new coordinator and everything, he decided to have everybody line up on Pacific. So before 13th street, whoever was first, they were first and we lined up all the way back to 18th yeah. and 19th street, yeah. which kind of made more sense being in that, uh, you know, being that way, and I, it, it, it made it easier. I think so. You know, they've changed that too. So, um, and this is what the guy in the first letter is complaining about. He goes, I used to wait for Dash over here on this street, and they're not there anymore. And I, I'd have to walk four or five blocks to catch it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know? It's inconvenient. And it's yeah. a change that he, that has negatively affected his life. And this other, this lady today is negatively affected by bus fumes and noise and traffic. And going down her residential her, street. Yeah, going that's down her saying. narrow, yeah. narrow residential street. It's all very understandable. Yeah. And, and we sympathize, but I don't know what we can do about it, but we can reach out to the people and at least let them know we're aware of it and, and uh, we'll continue to monitor it. Boy, there's a, there's a, a useless phrase, but yeah. it's it's probably about all we can do, unless somebody has a, a yeah. flash of insight here. Um, item six is uh, RV parking on Park Western Drive. John and I need to 
drive by there and take take names and numbers. We need to <laughs> need to write down license numbers and report them. Now, we, we I think it's a question to go to. Um, uh, well, it's a, if it's if it's clearly a safety issue, then that's one thing. If it's an annoyance to the neighbors, that's another thing. And and RVs parking anywhere should observe the applicable rules that they need to move and they can't just park there permanently and that sort of thing. So item number six, John, I, I just haven't had time to go do it. John, I think. Well, you and I should. I can show you will. this real. Uh, it's Tom sent this picture. Is that, that on is, Park? That's Park Western? Yeah, it's Park Western. And that is right right after the uh, the stop sign of the school. Now, okay. there's always, there's another one that parks, you know, uh, you know, before the school. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the street where the school is on. Okay. Oh, I, that, that, uh, that's the I don't, one. I don't see an RV yeah. in that pic. I don't see an RV in that picture. No, the RV is standing behind him. Is parked behind him. That's why I said oh, okay. it's past. And usually there's another RV parked before the stop sign. Right. Um, so um, we need to go. There's a, it's a, his name is Tom. I, I got his full name somewhere. Oh, and the DOT guy? No, this is, uh, he lives right there. Oh, the resident. And there's usually okay. two to three RVs and along the way parked okay. there. Matter of fact. Right. I, I come up. I come up Park Western sometimes when I'm going to Park Plaza and there's, you know, it's usually on the weekend, but I see RVs lining up, going up to the stop sign at Park Western, I yeah. mean, Park Western, the school. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they're, they're there on a regular basis. Now, how, you know, where, how long they stay there and whether they're there during the week, I don't know, but yeah, Tom said sometimes during the week there there's like one or two of them. They're there for two, three days, and they'll move. And then, like you said, the weekend they'll come back and park two or three there. It all depends. It and it's just uh, their concern is the kids and you know the school. Now, yeah, one of the I other understood. things too, that we you know the, we didn't mention this time. Uh, everyone knows where Seventh Street School is at, off of Weymouth. Yes. And Kelly Miller works there. Well, there's, uh, if you're going down uh, Weymouth and you make a right on Seventh, the school's there. You see the Pride, you know, Pride sign there on the fence, and you go, um, you make the right there, and the first street you come to is Ellery. That's the first stop sign. There used to be for many years a crosswalk person for you know crosswalk crossing guard crossing guard thank you um, uh, they've been gone now for two three years they haven't had four years you know and then the next street I believe is Dotson where it curves right uh, okay yeah if you're coming up from Biner. On Western, you go up Western, you make a left on Biner or Binner, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. You make a quick left and it takes you down mm -hmm. and loops and it's there's a stop sign there and the school's on your left. I think that's Dotson Road or whatever it is. So again, no cross guard. And I've gone there a lot of times because the light on Weymouth and, uh, and Western, Jesus. I mean, I, I have to go to the Assistance League. I get there about eight, 10 after eight. And the line's got 20 cars in it. It's coming so, out at the truth. So I'm on the right side okay. all the time to go across. It gets, and so I'll go to Biner and I make it. And I still, I make it before those cars do. But I'm stuck there waiting for kids. A lot of it. And I've watched people, they block this, the, this crosswalk or people that are having to turn on Dawson or have to go on seven because they got to go to Weymouth. They're doing the same thing I did. My God, they don't wait. They'll, they'll, okay. There's kids waiting in the corner with the parents okay. and they just John, John, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop you now since this isn't on the agenda. It, it, I will take this as public comment from you and yeah. we will uh, follow up appropriately.
it's a good it's a good point. Thank you. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, item number seven is uh, that will be handled at tomorrow night's uh, planning and land use meeting. They're dealing with the port, writing the considering a letter to the port about uh, taking care of the dying trees across Caffey from uh, from the uh, self storage unit and uh, and those uh, opportunity businesses there on Gaffey. Um, with that in mind, I have some homework to do from tonight's meeting and uh, I appreciate your input. If anybody has any other public comment they'd like to make, uh, please do so. If not, I think this is been a productive hour and I want to thank those of you who are here for joining us and I wish you all um, happy new year right yep. it is the new year coming up is it not it sure is good so we have things to do for our next month's meeting and um, I think I'll just say that there's no need for an emergency meeting uh, these things these things can be handled in in different ways. So with that, I want to say thank you to this core of people that are here tonight, to our, our uh, friend and colleague, Doug Epperhart, who is a font of information, history, and pithy remarks whenever, <laughs> whenever called upon. We thank you, Doug, for all your contributions to this community and hope you will keep them up for many years to go, come. And with that, unless anyone has any other comments, I want to thank you for coming. Happy New Year and take care of yourselves.